Hello viewers, this is Dow Too Fast here. I recently finished building this home network system that you see right here. Now before building this system, I had my router on my desk, the modem was on the floor, network drive was next to my computer, all the pieces were all over the place. And I thought it was time to clean everything up and put all these pieces into one central location. And that's what you're seeing right now. Now I did film the entire process of building this network system. So you get to see how I transform an empty space in my closet to this home network system. So let's get started. In my closet here, there's a big open space right here. Right above the space is the opening for the stairway to go up to the attic. So it's very convenient for me to get up there and run the wire that I need. I'm gonna drop it onto this wall. The first thing I need to do is install this low voltage recess cable plate. And this will allow me to bring all the cables into the room. With this wall plate, there are two swing arms on either side. So all you have to do is place this into the hole and screw it tight. And then the swing arm will come out and clamp onto the drywall. Now to securely mount all the equipment onto the wall and also to place some of the equipment onto the wire shelf, I'll be installing a piece of half inch MDF wood on the shelf and also on the wall. And here I'm at Home Depot buying a sheet of four by eights half inch MDF. Now if you don't have a table saw at home, you can ask them to cut the pieces for you as long as you provide them the dimension and this is done free of charge. This is the Rust-Oleum flat white primer and this one covers a lot better as you can see. I put two coats on that and I just finished putting on another two coat on this bigger piece. I've gone ahead and placed the bottom piece of the MDF on the shelf and I use some clips at the bottom to secure it. Next I'll install the MDF wood on the wall. I've gone ahead and marked the wall studs. I'll secure the piece of MDF wood on the wall by installing screws directly into the wall stud. Next, I'll be installing this Trendnet 16 port patch panel and also this Shaxon hinge wall bracket, which this patch panel will mount onto. In the middle, I have a monitor for my NVR security system. I'm going to wall mount this to the back right here. On the right, I have my router and I installed two screws that I'll use to mount the router onto the wall. Next, I'll be installing these two APC power strips onto the wall. As you can see, I've already installed the screws for mounting the power strip onto the wall. Let me show you what's going on. I've gone ahead and ran some of the power cables for these devices. And then next, I'm gonna work on the patch panel here. Here's a look from the attic with all the ethernet cables going into my network room. And now these cables are going to the patch panel. And let me show you how to punch down these Cat5 cables. This patch panel that I have here is a 16 port patch panel. Here's a look at the front. And on this side, we have eight ports. If you look on the back here, there's port one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight more ports on the other side here. And right now I'm gonna punch down port seven and eight. If you look on the back of the patch panel, there are two rows of color codes. One is marked A, the other one is marked B. I'm gonna use the A side so if you follow the A side, starting on the left side, it's gonna be white, blue, blue, white, brown, brown. On the other side, the A is gonna be green, white, green, white, orange, orange. On the Cat5 cable, using a tool like this, strip back about three cm of the sheathing of this Cat5 cable, and then separate each pair of the wires. Right now we have the green pair, brown pair, orange pair, and the blue pair. Next, we'll place each wire into the corresponding color that you see right here. White, blue, blue, white, brown, brown, on the other side, green, 
white green, white orange, orange. Now I should mention to you that depending on which manufacturer of the patch panel, these color pinout that I'm showing you might be different. Next we'll be using a punch tool like this, and at the end, there's a cutter. One shaped like this, the other one shaped like this. We're going to use this one right here. Now if you look at the end of this tool, one side has a blade, the other side does not. When you punch down the wire, the blade side needs to be on the outside of the patch panel here. So place this over the slot where the wire is and push this down. And it'll cut the end of the wire that you see right here. Now we'll do the other side. So this Cat5 cable has now been punched down onto the patch panel. Use some tie wrap to tie up the bundle of cable you have here. And this runs all the way to the wall plate. Now we can install the patch panel onto the swing bracket here. Right now I'm just making a bunch of patch cables. Now if you want to know how to make your own ethernet cable, I made a video several years ago showing you how to do this. I'll put that video link in the... Test it out to make sure it's correct. And this one's good. Now we can connect the patch cable to our switch. Let me show you how to install a female RJ45 connector on the Cat5 cable on a wall outlet that you see right here. I have two Cat5 cables, don't worry about the other one. That's an extra one I ran, but I'll be connecting the connector onto this cable. First thing you want to do is remove about two inch of the outside PVC jacket using a tool like this. And all you have to do is place this cutter. There's a blade on here, onto the insulation, and then spin it around, and then pull this outer jacket off. Next, you want to separate each wire and untwist it, like you see right here. The female RJ45 connector that I'll be using is this one right here. Now these jacks do have different designs. The one I have here has this clear piece that will go on top. Wires will be placed, plus a locking tab that you need to install. So let me show you how to install this. Now if you look on this clear piece, there are two sides to the color codes. One side is going to be EIA T568A standard. The other side is going to be EIA T568B standard. For this install, we're going to be using the EIA T568A side. And it starts with orange, then orange white, and you go along all the way to the brown color. So here we'll start with the orange wire. Just place it in here. And it comes with this tool. That'll push the wire in. Next is white orange.
followed by white green. White blue. You can also do multiple wires at the same time. Here's blue. Green. Brown. And white brown. Make sure you push all these wires in, install this clear piece. Now we have the locking tab. And that's it. To install this, snap this into this cover plate. So you need to do the same thing for each room that you want to have an ethernet cable run to. Also make sure when you run each Cat5 cable to the room, you mark both ends of the cable so you know which cable is which when you get back to the network room. So here's the TV mount that I picked up for the monitor. And inside the box have all the metal brackets that we'll need to install the monitor onto the wall. Now over here we have two vertical brackets. If I slide this over, you'll see we have existing screw holes on the monitor itself. So all you have to do is put the bracket on top of the hole and you adjust the height. Once you find the right height, then you can use the screws that's included right here. The kit also comes with this very large bracket that you need to install onto the wall. This one I have here has a bubble level, so you can make sure it's level when you install it. Also, these holes here is what you'll use to install the bolts. And for this, you'll be using the biggest bolt that comes with the kit, this one right here. After this is installed onto the wall, looking at the back of the monitor, the brackets can be installed against the wall like this and then you slide the monitor from top to bottom with these hooks at the top and bottom and all you have to do is put the monitor onto this bracket and there are two locking screws right here let's tighten these up so it won't come loose here I have the wall bracket installed now we can hang the monitor onto this bracket One very important component that I'll be installing as part of the new setup is a good UPS. Over here is the APC Smart UPS 750. Now I've had this for a couple of years, but recently the internal battery lost its ability to hold its charge. And that's typical after three, four, five years of use. And this pair of batteries you see here were actually pulled out of the unit. And I got the new batteries on the left side here. This is the same rating and dimension as the original one. So all I'm going to do is transfer this wiring harness over to the new batteries and then install it back into the unit. And then it'll be up and running again. Okay, let's turn it on. Here's a completed look of my home network. Now let me give you an overview of the setup I have. Starting at the top, I have all the ethernet cables from different rooms in the house coming into this closet. It goes to the 16 port patch panel. Now this patch panel is hinged on the left side, so if I remove the two screws on the right, this will swing open and I can access the punch down at the back. From the patch panel, through these patch cables, it goes down to this 32 port fast ethernet switch. Now this switch is a 10100 switch, it's not a giggy switch. Now some people wonder, why do you need a patch panel? A patch panel is very useful if you have many rooms or offices connecting back to your network. It allows for a very nice, clean, organized wiring back to your switch. Also, let's say if you have a room or office that you no longer need to have a network connection, you can simply go to your switch, go to your patch panel, and disconnect it. You won't have any old wiring dangling around. Also, with the unused switch port, now you can connect it to a different port on the patch panel. In the middle is my home security system. At the bottom, this is the NVR network video recorder. With this box, it records 24-7. It's also connected to my router that you see over here. With that connection, 
I have live view and I can play back recorded video on my phone and PC. Above that, this monitor is showing the live view from all four cameras. Moving over to the right, this is my router. This is a Netgear Nighthawk X6 router. At the bottom, we have four switch ports. With the four switch ports, the first cable here connects to my switch that's situated on the left side here. The next cable, this green one, is the NVR network video recorder. This yellow cable connects to my network drive. And the network drive is right here. This is a Western Digital network drive. Next cable, this goes to a power inserter box that sits at the back here. And this connects to my Ubiquiti Unify access point. And the last cable on the right, this red cable connects to my cable modem. This is a UB Doxis 3.0 cable modem. At the very end, on the right side, I have two APC power strips. Both of these power strips are connected to this APC UPS that you see right here. With this UPS, I get surge protection and backup power in case I lose power in the house. As you can see, this is a pretty straightforward setup with components that most of you have in your home. Now this project took about a weekend for me to do. It wasn't too difficult. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave one in the comments section. And don't forget to click on thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.